All right, folks, here we are back underneath my favorite avocado tree. Um, doing a video on the full moon in Sagittarius, which is going to happen in less than 12 hours at this point in time. Uh, as full moons go, this is a relatively benign full moon, although the week that has led up to it has been anything but benign. Um, let's do a recap of a few things that full moons bring up. Um, there could have been, as the week went on, and even the past 48 to 72 hours, an intensification, either an intensification of emotion, although I have a feeling that the entire week has been that way, and as we've headed to the full moon, some of the intensification may actually have de-intensified or de-escalated, but it's been that kind of week no matter what. Um, but another way that the intensification is felt around the time of a full moon is the intensification of activity, the intensification of having a to-do list and waking up in the morning and realizing that by the time the day is done, or by the time you want your day, is done, your day to be done, your, your to-do list is far from complete and there are more hours that have to be put into work or manifesting things or creating things or doing things. So from a new moon to a full moon, a full moon is not, unfortunately, a time of rest. A full moon is a time of intensified energy and activity or emotion. And so it wouldn't be surprising if over the last week, oh, it just got a little windy. Um, it wouldn't be surprising if over the last week, and especially as you're heading to today, things just became busier and, and, and more involved and you just haven't been able to be, stay on top of and find the appropriate kind of rest that you may have felt that you wanted in order to feel restored because the sheer amount of activity and work that has needed to get done has been constantly escalating. Um, and getting away from you. Okay, that's the full moon. The other part of this full moon that is worth mentioning and is important to mention is pretty on point with some of the energies that have been at play over this past week. A new moon or a full moon are not only a new moon or a full moon in themselves, but they are also taking a snapshot of the energy at the time of the new moon and the full moon. So even if the full moon in Sagittarius is benign, this week before has not been benign based on the lineup of planets on the eclipse angle with Mars and Mercury in Cancer, where the new moon solar eclipse is gonna occur on July the 2nd, and with Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn, where the uh, full moon lunar eclipse will occur on July the 16th. And this showdown um, has had positive and challenging energy intensifications over the last week. And the full moon simply captures or takes a snapshot, snapshot of that moment and the energies therefore remain for us to be dealt with and played with over the next two weeks. But especially, especially at around the time of the full moon and as the first week after the full moon progresses. By the time we get to the second week of the full moon, after the full moon, which is the first week before the next new moon on July the 2nd, there's a, there's a, there is a slowdown and, a, and, a, and an intake of breath and a rest. That's the time to rest, you know. The energy is the moon. We don't design our lives based on the energy of the moon and as a result of which we're always typically a little bit at odds with it. The time before a new moon is frustrating because our body wants to rest and yet we feel like we have a to-do list to attend to and the energy is dead and flat and we don't really enjoy it. The time around a full moon is a little too busy and a little too intense and we don't necessarily enjoy that either. Leaving that aside, um, the new moon is in Sagittarius which means the sun is in the sign of Gemini and the moon is in the sign of Sagittarius opposite the sun. And it's because the moon is opposite the sun that we, that the moon is able to reflect the face of the moon that we see is completely lit up reflecting the light of the sun. And as a result of which we experience that as a full moon. The polarity between Gemini and Sagittarius is one of the lower mind and the higher mind. That of cleverness and savvy and remaining plugged into your environment around you and very much using your mind to navigate through life and your immediate concerns and your egoic concerns and your fears and anxieties, plotting, being smart, being savvy, being clever. Um, and then the, si the sign of Sagittarius is very much around about wisdom and removing yourself from a situation and looking at it from a larger, broader perspective and making wise and God-centric decisions. The sign of Gemini, very plugged in to social activities and politics and things around you. The sign of Sagittarius, remote, removed, 
sage, philosophical, spiritual. And, and this polarity between the lower mind and the higher mind is exaggerated right now based on even some of the activities on the Cancer Capricorn spectrum. And I've done two videos on that just before this, so you can look at that. I'm not going to hit you over the head with that, other than to exhort you that whatever pressures you've been feeling, especially if they've been the result of frustrated passion, and I will expand on that in a second, I will encourage you to take careful, measured, wise, mature, removed steps to address your feelings as opposed to immediate, reactive, vengeful, um, clever, political, plotting, um, ulterior motive uh, solutions. Um, Someone today sent me a video, for those of you who speak Urdu or Hindi, a, a lovely video with, with, uh, with, with a comparison between Akal and Irfan, lower mind and or, or mental intelligence or cleverness or the preponderance of the mind to figure out how to solve issues and problems, or Irfan or the, the higher mind, uh, wisdom, faith even. Um, whatever it is that comes to you from a more quiet and a more removed place and a more mature place to see the situation from more of a 360 angle or a bird's eye view and therefore take steps that are filled with understanding and even love as opposed to self-protection and reactivity. Exaggerated and very much a theme. When I got that video, I thought, well, here it is. Here's, And it's also an interesting way in which this full moon is operating. Because this past week has seen such a peak or an intensification of activities, this full moon is actually a bit of a break to catch our breath. But the peak of the activity is not over. In the sign of Cancer, I've already explained in two videos, we've got Mercury and Mars facing off with Pluto and Saturn, with Pluto and Saturn being, in this case, the stronger planets. Uh, but it's still a face-off between some powerhouses, uh, between us and forces that want us to be wise and disciplined and restrained. Uh, the, the, and, 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 and Mars and Mercury meet up with each other uh, shortly after the full moon. You know, by, by Tuesday, some of these activities will be done. So some of the communication, some of the work around this is still occurring. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if after the full moon, Monday or Tuesday, we have another step in this saga that has been playing out over this past week that has taxed so many of us in a different way. Let me focus on the eclipse preparation and the full moon and what it is that it might be bringing to head. I'm sorry about the ambient music. When I started off, it wasn't there, and now it's there. So I'm not going to redo this video. Um, for some people, the energies of this face-off and this preparation for the eclipses on July 2nd and July 16th um, we're really setting the stage for the eclipse on July 2nd and the corresponding lunar eclipse on January the 10th of next year. That's really, that's really the stage that is being set to some extent. But this handoff, face-off between the eclipses and Cancer Capricorn that will happen in July creates its own force and pressure. There's a need from an overall perspective. There's a need to question your life. If you were to say, what... What is the primary purpose of all these eclipses and all the tension and the frustrated passion and the, I think it is to take a step back from whatever it is that is happening and creating some of this frustration and to really look at your life and question it. Question it. Where are you spending your time and your energy and where are you losing it and to whom? Eclipses will come in and they will create change. Eclipses will create change. You don't have to create the change. You just have to respond to what is... Actually, I'm not even going to say that. You don't... Eclipses will come in and create the change. And they will create the circumstances to which... Which will accelerate your moving on to whatever that next thing is that you need to move on to. And as a result of which, really questioning what it is that this last week has brought in some ways to a head or may have felt like it was bringing to a head would not be an unwise thing to do. And to do it wisely and maturely as opposed to reactively and frustratedly would, not, it would, be, would, be, would be the wiser and more mature choice. Wisdom and maturity being the wiser and more mature choice. Um, the, the, for some people, some of these energies are being felt positively. And for those people where the eclipses are happening in a positive way, it's an offer. 
out of the ordinary, a bigger offer, something life-changing, something that has more of an impact, something that is leading you to something that you desire, something, something that is positive and affirming and more or bigger than the usual things that come through for you. A chapter turn, a book turn, a real marker. And if you are feeling, and if, this, and if this time is pregnant with something like this coming through, but it's not here yet, then you would know who you are. And that's the right kind of energy to kind of enjoy and support. Whether it comes through or not remains to be seen, particularly in the month of July, maybe after the July the 4th weekend. But we wait and see exactly how that's going to go and what's going to turn out there. I don't want to spend too much time for those people who's, for whom the eclipse is a positive. I congratulate you and you carry on with your life as maturely and wisely as possible. For people who are feeling this energy over the past week as a kind of a call to arms or ta 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 da you know, like conch shells blowing or trumpets blowing and the potential for power struggles or the potential for a standoff or a conflict or really what it was, what it has been and what will continue to be till the end of the month is frustrated passion. Mars, the planet of passion and energy and drive and force and sexuality, is in Cancer. You know, I gave the Oberon quote, the fiery shaft of young Cupid being quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon. And there's, I would emphasize the words fiery and chaste as somehow coming into conflict with each other. The, the, the planet of recklessly or maybe directly going after what it is that he wants and not being satisfied until he gets it is in the sign of emotional consequence and emotional logic and as a result of which finds himself frustrated and not being able to get what he wants it doesn't matter what your gender is but if mars is trying to drive you to go after something that you want or a desired effect something that comes out of passion and drive and energy it's very likely that the planet mars as i've said to a couple of people finds himself frustratingly seated on this giant waterbed that he can't get out of. Now, Cancer is a tricky sign when it comes to these kinds of things. The crab, protective, nurturing, still very much a leadership sign, but Cancer has a tendency, you know, as a crab, to move sideways. It's a tricky little sign. Um, and, so, and so one of the ways in which this energy could express itself is in sideways and indirect maneuverings and manipulating and plotting and kniping people in the back and you know the fact that the energy can't get what it wants and the fact that the energy is fighting for something passionately but is in a place where this energy is thwarted and can't express itself and can't get access to what it wants might mean that one of the reactions is to is to you know figure out what it can do to go after what it wants i have warned you that the consequences of that will be quite serious because with Saturn opposing this, the planet of discipline and maturity and restriction and doing the right thing and being very, very conscious of cause and effect. Very, very conscious of your intention. So even if you're fooling yourself and you're making all sorts of excuses for why your intention is this because you have been wronged by the other party, if your actions and your steps are not wise and mature and fundamentally loving and fundamentally careful, there may well be consequences as a result of things that you take on over the past couple of weeks, this full moon, or indeed the next lunation, or the second half of next year, the next lunar cycle, with the standoff. Now, the standoff is going to be done, as I said, by about Tuesday. But the larger question is, because these planets have come into the sign of Cancer prior to the Sun coming here, around the 21st or 22nd of this month, and prior to the eclipse on the 2nd of July, the question is, what has it announced? And what has it exaggerated at around the time of this full moon? I'm covering ground that I have covered over the last two videos, but it's worth covering. So the full moon in Sagittarius, as far as the sign of Sagittarius is concerned and where it's concerned, if you know where it is in your chart, just pay attention to it. It might be benign, wise, quiet, but you may find that you're spending a fair amount of, t of your time briefly over the last 48 to 72 hours in the next 24 hours related to topics it, where the sign of Sagittarius is in your chart. It might be a distraction. It's not the main big musical motif that you have to be paying attention to. That is being designed and defined by the eclipses right now, but it could be a distraction. But outside of that, the sign of Sagittarius in the full moon is exhorting you to wiser choices in the middle of what is probably an interactive and political and savvy time. And the theme is 
echoed and brought to you at a time when, as it is, the battle between the lower mind and the higher mind or the consequences of frustrated passion, but a need for releasing and discipline. And, you know, this theme of releasing, if you don't know where it is in your chart, be careful because sometimes when we're dealing with frustrated passion, we may want to release the thing that is frustrating us. But often the release is something that we don't want to release and that we are attached to, but it has outgrown its purpose. So be very careful of taking these videos or the eclipses or reading something and thinking, you know what it is that needs to be released. You really do need to consciously be looking at where the sign of Capricorn is in your chart because that eclipse is coming up on the 16th of July where the eclipses of release have been active since January the 5th of this year and and really make reflective and knowledgeable inquiry into what it is that needs to be released. Don't just go slash off a relationship or slash off something thinking, oh, these astrologers are saying I need to release something. I'm just going to push this over the and chances are what needs to be released is something you don't want to release that you're addicted to that it's comfortable for you to be enveloped in and your wise self knows it needs to be given up in its current guise but you're holding on to it rather tightly that's really how the eclipses of release work one other thing related to eclipses and i'm sorry to bring it up but eclipses can announce uh departures from this earthly plane passing away deaths uh, people or things being eclipsed from your life. So sometimes it's the actual transition and sometimes it is intimations or news of a chronic illness or a next step. This depends on where the eclipse is occurring in your chart and the charts of the people who are affected. But just, just have that awareness too. And because this last week was eclipse announcing, um, I would, if, if any of you have gotten news or information that is serious in that way or grave... Uh, know that the eclipses are at work and God has taken the wheel. Okay. I will leave it at that. This past week has set the stage for what it is that much of July is going to bring to us and that we're going to be dealing with. And we will be dealing with it. And there will be some conversation that we will be having with energies related to 2017 and 18, which I will develop in future videos. But I wish you as happy a possible full moon. I'm sure you are glad, those of you who've experienced this last week in a challenging way, that some of the energy peaking might be a little behind you and that you're dealing with the consequences. But wait for Monday, Tuesday to see if there are any developments or communications or something, kind of something that comes in to put a cherry on top of the whipped cream, cream of frosting that you've had to be, that you've been deluged in over the past week or so that has not been fun necessarily for those of you who are dealing with offers or something positive congratulations wonderful i hope it takes you to wherever it is that it, you want it to go and for others just pay attention to what has been going on around this full moon even though if the full moon days are not necessarily as taxing um and for the astrologically inclined, by all means, take a look at see where Sagittarius is in your chart and see if over the past 48, 72 hours and the next 24 hours, you find yourself distractingly, maybe even pleasantly focused on that in the middle of everything else that you've got to be focused on. Above all, try to get some remove and perspective from what is going on around you and try to act from a place of wisdom, clarity, maturity, discipline, and considered decisiveness, not reactive decisiveness. Okay, um, please comment, like, share, subscribe to this video, subscribe to, no, subscribe to the video. If you found this useful, feel free to share it, comment, uh, like it. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever it is that I do videos. Uh, my email address will be listed in the description box below. If you want to consult me for reading, you're welcome to do so. Just send me an email there and we can get talking. And I will leave it at that and be in touch shortly. Thanks. Bye.